All right, we're going to cover chapter 6.7 and 6.8a all in one go. Uh, this chapter largely is based off of formulas. The first one we have is sales tax, which hopefully we're all a little bit familiar with. Sales tax is equal to the original price times the sales tax rate. So for those in Charlotte County, the sales tax rate is 7%. And we are going to view 7% instead as an integer, 0 0.07. And let's say we go to the dollar store and we actually buy something that cost $1 there. So let's say the original price of the object is $1. We take $1 times it by 0 0.07 and our sales tax is, as you would imagine, 7 cents or 7 tenths, 7 hundredths of a dollar. And if we wanted to find the total price of this object we bought from the dollar store, we take the original price, which was $1, plus whatever the sales tax was, which is 7 hundredths of a dollar, and 1 plus 0 0.07 gives us $1.07, and that's how much we would end up paying. So that's a nice example of sales tax. So let's go ahead and see a little bit more challenging of a problem where we got a word problem. And it says the sales tax rate in Wyoming is 4%. Now what we should do whenever we see a percentage is immediately change it into an integer, 0.04. You move two to the left. Then it asks us how much sales tax would be charged on a fireplace with a screen with doors, a fireplace screen with doors that cost $239. So sales tax, oops, we can just use the formula that we are given in which we take the price of the original object, which is 239, and times it by our tax rate, which here in Wyoming is 0.04. And we just have to multiply the two together. And in case you don't remember how we multiply decimals, you pretend that they don't exist for the most part and multiply as usual. So four times nine is 36, carry the three. Four times three is 12, plus the three is 15, carry the one. Four times two is eight, plus the one is nine. And then we do zero times zero, it's boring because it's all zero. And we have two decimal places, so we'll move over one, two, so we find our sales tax that we owe for the Wyoming government would be $9.56. Now let's see, did I answer the whole thing? It asked us what is the total price paid? So the total price, I'll take whatever the original price was, 239, and add to it the sales tax. Now be careful there was no change with the original price. And when we add decimals, it is crucial that we line up the decimal points. So we'll go ahead, add as usual, once the decimal points are lined up, and we end up with $248.56 is the total price paid for this fireplace screen with doors, okay? And just make sure you are specific with your answer. Make sure you state this guy is sales tax and this guy is the total and be clear when you answer. Let's go ahead and see another one. It's going to be a little bit different. They say the sales tax on the purchase of a new fishing boat is $112 and the sales tax rate is 2%. What is the purchase price before tax was added? Okay, so they tell us the sales tax. And I'm going to rewrite my formula. I know it's a few pages back, but we'll just say sales tax is the original price times the tax rate. And I abbreviated original price with OP. Now, sales tax is, is a beautiful word. It means equals. So sales tax is 112. I don't know what the original price is. So that is what I'm going to solve for times the rate, which is 2%, so 0 0.02. Now, if you want to, and it makes you feel better, instead of original price, you can write the unknown as X. 
and now you're solving for x. You have x times 0.02, so to undo it, we divide both sides by 0.02. What we do to one side, we do to the other. When we divide by a decimal, we have to make it a whole number, so we'll move over 1, 2, do the same to the top. So we have 11,200 divided by 2 equals x. And let's go ahead and divide that in. So we end up with 5,600. And this unit is dollars. So the original price is $5,600. Not too bad. So that brings us to our next formula that we have, which is discount. And discount's formula is very similar to our sales tax. We take the original price and times it by a rate, this time a discount rate. But discount is something we take off. Sales tax is added on. So here, discount, we will subtract. And it's very important we remember that, OK? So let's go ahead and tackle a problem. We have, if a pinball machine is on sale for 3150 and the original price is 3999 find the discount and find the rate of discount. I'm also going to add something real quick in here. Uh, I'm going to say round to nearest percent. Mostly because my discount rate is not going to come out very nicely here. So let me add that to the directions. Now, first things first, it said find the discount. Well, I can take the original price, subtract it by how much it's on sale for, and that will tell me the discount. So I have nine, I got four, I got eight, and there we go. So the discount that I'm getting on this pinball machine is $849. Now I need to find the rate of discount. So we can use our formula in which we know discount is equal to whatever the original price is times the rate. So it's very similar to before. We know our discount because we calculated it was 849. We know the original price is 3,999 times some rate which we want to solve for. And in order to get rate by itself, we'll divide both sides by 3,999. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Now, this is a little bit miserable. Uh, I won't lie, it's a lot of miserable. So we have to take whatever number's on the bottom and divide it into the number up top. And when we do this, we're going to have a decimal of some sort. That's where we're going to get this rate. I'm going to fling three zeros at the end. And the reason why is because it asked me to round to the nearest percent. I know I have to move over two for me to turn it into a percent, and I need one more place so that I know which way to round, up or down. Now, the tough part is just to try to figure out the long division. So 3,999, I ground it up. I'm looking at it. It's basically 4,000. So 4,000 times what will get us close to 8,000 in a bit, and I say two. So now I have to actually multiply it out. So it's just a little bit tedious. And 2 times 9 is 18, carry the 1. 2 times 9 is 18 again, plus the 1. It's 19, carry the 1. And then finally we got 2 times 3 is 6. And there was a 1 that was carried that I forgot about. And that actually makes it 7. So we'll subtract this entire thing. So we got to borrow. 10 minus 8 is 2. Got to borrow again. 18 minus 9 is 9. 3 minus 9, we got to borrow again. So 13 minus 9 is 4, and then 7 minus 7 is nothing. Bring down the 0. Now, this is practically 4,000 times something to get us relatively close to 4,000, which is 1. And we have the same number, 3,999. Subtract. We got to borrow again. It's lovely. Borrow again. And borrow again. Bring down the zero. 
And now almost 4,000 times what will get us close to 9,000. I think two is the best we'll do with that 7,998. Subtract, and I'm sure we'll get some number, but I'm gonna call it quits. Mostly because I'm only concerned about the rate, and I just have to round it to the nearest percent. So I'm gonna take 0.212, and whatever it may be, who knows. I'm gonna move it over two decimal points, so I have 21.2, whatever it may be, percent. And since I'm rounding to the nearest percent, I look at the one, go to the right, it's a two, so I round down. So my answer is 21%. Minus it being a little bit tedious, that wasn't too painful. Let's go ahead and tackle another. Uh, we have a thing called commission. And commission is equal to the sales times the commission rate. To give you a better idea of what commission is, in case you don't know what it is, it's very similar to tips in waitressing. So you have whatever your tip you're going to get is equal to whatever the price of the meal was times whatever tip rate that they're going to give you. Usually 15% is the nice courtesy, or you said you really like them, you gave them 20%. Whatever that rate may be, you take a percent of whatever your price of your meal is, and you add that on to whatever your price that you paid for the meal, and that's the total price. So that's tip, it's very similar to commission. What commission really is, is a car salesman sells you a car, and part of his salary is added to him whatever he gave you that price of that car is so that commission rate maybe he's got like 20 or something takes 20 percent of whatever the car was and he gets paid that extra bit so let's go ahead and tackle a problem if i haven't confused you already so we have jose's commission rate is 21 percent what is the commission from the sale of $12,500 worth of windows? So Jose is a window salesman. He sold, this is how much he sold, $12,500. And we take that and we multiply it by his commission rate, which is 21%, and that will tell us what his commission is. And all you have to do is the math just a little bit tedious here we'll go ahead and multiply it I need to do it vertically not horizontally and we'll have 1 times 0 1 times 5 1 times 2 1 times 1 placeholder don't forget it 2 times 0 2 times 0 2 times 5 is 10 carry the 1 2 times 2 is 4 plus the 1 is 5 and 2 times 1 is 2 add them up And then since there was two decimal places, we move over two. So Jose gets a commission of $2,625 added on to whatever salary he may have, and that's what he gets paid. Okay, now that's it of 6.7. 6.8a is about simple interest, in which we have a lovely formula, I equals PRT, and it's P times R times T. I represents simple interest, P is the principal, or you can think of this as a starting amount or the initial amount. It's usually either the initial amount you put into the bank or maybe how much you take out that you're borrowing. Um, it's the beginning, so to speak. R is the interest rate. It will be given to you as a percent and you'll need to convert it to an integer. And time is always in years, and that's what T represents. So let's go ahead and tackle a problem where we'll work through this. We have Copypix Inc. borrows $10,000 at 9% for 60 days. Find the amount of interest due and find the total amount that must be paid after 60 days. So this problem tells us a lot of things. We want to find simple interest due, so I equals PRT. Now it's up to us to fill in what the principal and all the rates and time is going to be. We want to find the interest due. 
So we want to find I. That's the unknown to us. We know the principal is the initial amount that he's borrowing, which is $10,000. The rate is 9%, and we'll write that as an integer, 0 0.09. And T is 60 days. That's where a little bit of trouble comes up. We can't have T in anything but time. If we go back, time has to be in years. So we have 60 days. That's pretty much two months, right? 30 days in a month over 12 months in a year, which is pretty much one six. Now you might be going, well, wait a minute. 60 should go over how many days are in a year, which are 365. And yeah, you're right, but I'm rounding. I'm saying it's about, well, six can, 60 can go in there once, 60 can go in there almost six times. I'm taking an approximate mostly because I'm a mathematician and I don't need the exact amount. If I was a banker, I'd be probably going crazy because you're losing out on five days, which you could earn interest at. But we're only taking it yearly. So it's one sixth of the year. All we are going to do now is plug this in and solve for I. So we have 1,000 times our rate times our T. And I recommend taking 1,000 times 0 0.09 first, which gets you 900 times 1 6. And 900 times 1 6 is 150. So that is how much simple interest is occurred over this 60 day period. Now, the next part says find the total amount that must be paid after 60 days. If we want to pay the total, we're going to have to give back the principal that we took out initially for this borrowing of money plus the interest we owe. So our principal was 10,000 plus the interest we owe. So our final amount that we're going to have to give back after 60 days is $10,150. And that's it.